how does the negative impedance converter or NIC work and what is the input impedance? This is a two port device, NIC. As shown here, we have output ports with two terminals and input port with two terminals. Inside this black box, we have this. Assuming an ideal op amp uh, working in linear region, then um, the virtual short uh, should hold and V of positive terminal should be equal to V of negative terminal. And this op amp is of course in negative feedback loop. Uh, there are three terminals, three other terminals of op amp that uh, we are not going to discuss, but we need to be careful that they are connected properly. So positive uh, supply is connected to plus VCC, negative supply connected to minus VDD, and ground terminal connected to ground. Um, so if you want to find the input impedance, uh, we have to apply an input test voltage. Um, that's B-test, so that's one of the ways. And we need to just find out the value, the resulting value of I-test flowing into the circuit so that we can say Zn is just B-test divided by I-test. I just need to find I-test. Um, again, given that op-amp is an ideal op-amp in linear region with negative feedback loop, V positive should be equal to V negative, but V positive is equal to V test, so output also become V test. So um, op amp um, in linear region, so it's not saturated, and uh, that's in negative feedback loop. From here, we know that virtual short should hold, meaning that the voltage of positive and negative terminal should be equal to each other and should be equal to uh, V test. Okay, so let's name this one, two, and now we can easily find out the value of the I out because V out is equal to V in. So I out is equal to V out divided by just ZL. V out is equal to from 2. V out is equal to V test. Okay, so now we know the current I out flowing through ZL. But because op amp is ideal, there is Input, input impedance of op amp is infinite, no current flowing in to input terminal, no current coming out, so I out should exactly flow to, through ZL. So we can easily find out Vx uh, with respect to this node as just a voltage divider between Z2 and ZL, because the current flowing like that. So we can say uh, Vx is just simply a voltage division, so it means Z2 plus ZL divided by ZL times V out, which is equal to V test. So this is equation three. Now that we know Vx, we can easily find I test, which is the current flowing through Z1, because no current can go through positive terminal because input impedance of ideal op amp is infinite. So we can say I test is just uh, the voltage across Z1 divided by Z1. So it is Vn, which is Vtest, minus Vx, divided by Z1. And we can replace from 3 Vx with this. So we have Vtest minus Z2 plus Zl divided by Zl times Vtest. The whole thing divided by Z1. So we can say um, it's equal to minus C2 divided by Z1 times ZL times V test. And we can just rewrite two sides of this equation in a way that we can say so V test divided by I test is equal to minus Z1 divided by Z2, uh, sorry, this ZL is in the denominator, times ZL. Well, 
from 1, V test divided by I test is Zn, so we can say Zn is just minus Z1 divided by Z2 times Z. So that's the negative impedance conversion that we talked about, because the output impedance ZL is now converted into input with a negative sign. If Z1 happens to be equal to Z2 by design, then we can say Zn is simply minus ZL. Uh, that's an interesting property uh, that can be used in practical applications.